Welcome to Bald Guy DIY. In this video, I'm going to show you how to revamp the PySimple GUI Sudoku example to use push buttons to make it more playable and more aesthetically pleasing. If you've seen my other videos using the PySimple GUI module for Python, you've seen that it's very functional and powerful to create graphical user interfaces without a lot of advanced coding techniques. PySimple GUI isn't built from scratch, but it's a wrapper for some of the more popular graphical user interfaces like Tkinter or Qt or any of those other ones. There are a lot of advantages to using PySimple GUI because it really does simplify the process and make it a lot more straightforward than using some of these bigger packages by themselves. I've used them to create escape room puzzles using the Raspberry Pi. I've used it to create interfacing between LEDs, all sorts of different things. And I keep finding new uses all the time and really enjoying what I can create. Pineapple GUI has tons of documentation online of how to use it. And it also has a lot of example scripts that you can try out and play with and use as a foundation for your own creations. One of these scripts is for Sudoku. And while it works great, there's a lot of functionality with it. I didn't like that it uses text input boxes that you have to activate and then type a number into. I played Sudoku a lot on my phone using different apps and it's always nice to tap the number that you want to select and then just place it into each of the boxes that you want it to be in instead of having to tap on it, then find the right number, tap on another square, find the right number, which is sort of the experience that you have using these text input boxes. The other thing with the default example is that you have to use both the keyboard and mouse because you need to click on the box to activate it and then you need to use the keyboard or keypad in order to enter the number. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I revamped that script to use push buttons instead. And by dynamically updating the labels on the buttons, we're able to get a very similar experience to what you'd find in a full-fledged Sudoku app. So without further ado, let me show you how I did it. The first thing you'll need to do is download the original demo program that's from pysimplegui.com, which is the GitHub repository. And you're gonna go to demo programs and scroll all the way down, it's in alphabetical order, to the Sudoku. This is not going to be a tutorial of how I created this from scratch or go into a lot of detail about how each of the functions work. So if you haven't used pysimplegui before, you're definitely gonna to wanna to go and spend a couple hours reading the documentation, trying out the test programs, and really understanding how a window layout works and how some of the functionality with the button and updating the button states is accomplished. You can download the Python script, but here I'm just going to copy it from the GitHub repository and paste it into VS Code. And as I scroll down here and run it, you can see that this is the look of the original Sudoku puzzle. And you can see a very familiar layout. It looks like Sudoku. The number format is maybe not quite as nice as I would have liked. It's right justified instead of centered, but you can click in all of the boxes and enter in a number that you would like. There's also some function buttons at the bottom to start a new game, and you can randomly generate a game and choose how difficult you'd like it to be. If you were to enter a number here and just test it out, let's say we'll just pick a number and say five, and then we were to use the check button, it will tell you if it is actually correct, and if not, it's gonna be red, as you can see here. So you can delete that, that goes away, and you can move on to the rest of the puzzle. Uh, to put an eight here, which is correct, and click the check button, you can see that it does show it's gray, that means it's okay, and everything else is fine. All the yellows, of course, have not yet been filled in. As you go through the puzzle, filling in the squares, that yellow will go away and go back to white. That's the basic functionality of the game, as you would expect. And of course, these buttons down here do other things for you. The solve button will fill it in completely. The mask right here is basically the difficulty mode because it's how much of the board will be erased or obscured at the beginning when you click new game. If we take a quick sneak peek at what I created, you can see here that gone are all of those text boxes and instead you have edge to edge of tiles or buttons. You can simply choose a number button from the row below and then with that highlighted, you can go to any individual square, tap it or click it and it will put that number into the square. It's a very simple entry. It immediately turns red if it's the wrong number and white with black writing if it's the correct number. The default numbers that are showing at the beginning are all blacked out and those buttons are disabled so that you can't actually update them. 
we take a look at the code for the original script, we can see here that there's a few libraries that need to be imported, including PySimple GUI, which is normal, and then the NumPy, because that's going to create those initial arrays. There's also some other lists and functions that are needed for the sake of formatting, and so those are imported as well. You can read through the comments here to get an idea of some of the choices that were made. As you can see here, there's the function to create the original formats. It's going to first create the solution by putting in a full array, a randomized using NumPy functions, and then it's going to remove some of those using that masking ratio and remove some of them and replace them with nothing instead. There's a solve check which is going to go through step by step and see if every single uh, row and column matches to the solution from the puzzle and then it, there's also uh, some creation functions and then the main function which is what actually declares the window and the graphical user interface. All of the rest of that was the behind the scenes work to actually set up lists of lists which are the solution solutions to the Sudoku puzzle. The real nuts and bolts of generating that Sudoku board lies in this command here, which creates input boxes, not just one input box as you would expect, but with a feature of Python called list comprehension, it will create rows and columns of those same boxes from just one function call of an input box. I'm just simply going to create new lines for some of these options so that you can see at the end, that's the real meat and potatoes of it. These cascading for loops inside of that same statement which is called list comprehension. It's going to make an input box for three different rows, three different columns, and those are kind of the base uh, sections. And then within each of those sections, it's also gonna create three more rows and columns. So that's all accomplished in one command statement, which is incredibly powerful and a very simple way to create lots of the same kind of item. In my particular code, I used a very similar type of statement, except instead of using input boxes, I instead declared a button call. And you can see here, I use list comprehension as well. In the exact same format, I just had to choose different options for the buttons because buttons have little different variables and default values than the input boxes do. One of the biggest differences between an input box and a button is that input boxes have values where the buttons do not. The button have labels and the only real value they have is the button state which is either pressed or not pressed. So we have to be able to dynamically update all of the labels instead and I'm using the same list comprehension here in order to create all of the buttons, nine rows, nine column overall and a total of 81 different cells. At the end here, you can also see that I created one more row of buttons, and those are going to be to select which active number we want to be putting into the boxes. And then after I've declared them, similarly to the others, I'm updating them to be black on white instead of white on black. And then I'm also gonna, I use a value to store uh, which number is being selected, and I also disable all of those values that are not going to be used at the time. I have a new game function, which operates a little bit differently than the other, because I'm choosing to use static puzzles instead of having those generated ones. It is possible to modify that original code and not do what I did, but I wanted to use this for an escape room puzzle, so I don't want a random puzzle every time. I want a known puzzle at the beginning that I know is solvable and that will have values that can be translated into another code or puzzle down the road. You can see here then when my new game is developed, it's going to go through every row and column and set up the default values inside the grid. It's gonna update those values so that the original default values show as disabled with white text on a black background and all of the other buttons are going to have black text on a white background. There is also a solving check function and that solve check function is simply going to go through for each cell in each of the puzzle and solutions, it's going to see if those values match. If the value of the puzzle currently and the solution don't match, then it does nothing. If it does match, it's going to add one to this variable that I've called matches. And of course, as there's 81 cells, if the number of matches equals 81, then we know that the puzzle has been solved. And so here I have a couple print statements that are just there for troubleshooting perspective. You could put any code in there so that when it's solved, it triggers an action, uh, does something completely different, uh, puts a message on the screen, or if you're using a Raspberry Pi, could also trigger other puzzles, uh, general purpose input output pins, anything like that. I also have a button check here. This button check is to make sure that the number along the bottom row is still valid. 
if there's nine of those values already used, for example, nine fours have already been used, then it's gonna gray out that number because there's no more to place in the puzzle. Finally, I have a button selected function, which is going to make sure that the number selected is equal to the one of those buttons that we've pushed. After all of the functions are declared, I'm gonna call the new game function so that that original grid is created. And then I'm going to create the event loop, which is pretty standard in PySimple GUI. And it just goes through all of the functionality of what happens when you click each of those buttons. So you can see here, if any of the tiles are pressed in the main nine by nine grid, things that happen here. So it's going to update the tile with the currently selected number from the bottom, and it's going to change it to black writing on white background. And then if you look through, it's also gonna run the solve check to make sure that that change hasn't been what solved the puzzle. And if that's the case, it's going to run that script, of course. If it hasn't solved the puzzle, then it just goes ahead, waits for the next event to happen. And then finally, the last thing is just checking if one of those number buttons have been chosen along the bottom. And if they have been chosen, to just update our selected value so that it writes the correct number the next time through. If all of that doesn't make sense, let me just run the actual example. And you can see here, all of the default things that we want to show are blacked out and they're not able to be clicked. They've been disabled. All of the other spaces are showing as blue right now. And on the bottom row, we have one selected, which means if we clicked any of the tiles within the game window, it would change to a one. If we find four, which I think is one of the ones that's easily available, we select four and then place a four on the board. We can also move around the rest of the places where a four is supposed to be and add those values in as well. As you can see, they remain white because they are the correctly placed item. And as I finish them all off here, you can see now at the bottom that the number four is grayed out. It's no longer enabled, which means that you won't be able to click it again and add a 10th four to the board. It will hold at nine. That's the basic functionality. Of course, there's lots of things you could do. You could leave some of that original game functionality or create totally new functionality. But I really like the look of these buttons instead of the input boxes. So there you have the steps that it takes in order to take that original script and be able to convert it to use buttons instead of those text input boxes. I find it a lot more user friendly even to work with on a computer, but putting it on a touch screen with a Raspberry Pi or other type of small microcomputer would make it even more useful because you really just have one interface and with a few taps, can enjoy the game that we all love. Pi Simple GUI handles the interface beautifully and all you need to do is work on all your background coding to make the game perform as it should. What other games would you be interested in seeing or what other games have you tried? Let me know in the comments or send me an email. My information's in the description below. If you like this kind of content, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and keep checking back regularly as I post a new video every weekend. I've been busy with a lot of different projects using uh, 3D printing, electronics, coding, all sorts of different things. And I'm looking forward to sharing all of those with you one video at a time. Until next time, in all your DIY projects, whether you're inputting text or clicking buttons, don't be afraid to be balder.